Good morning and welcome to this demonstration. I'll show you how to run an Oracle Database 11G on Amazon RDS in five minutes. First of all, what is Amazon RDS? RDS stands for Relational Database Service. It's basically a database on demand in the cloud. Engines available are the MySQL database and recently Oracle 11G version R2. It's managed by Amazon Web Services team, so you don't need to spend time in managing the machine itself. The advantages are pay as you go, which means that you pay only for the amount of time that you use that machine. It's available in minutes, so you can launch an instance of an RDS with either Oracle or MySQL in just a few minutes. It's scalable. You can add more instances or you can even increase the size of the instance that you're running. For example, from a small machine to a bigger machine. And the backups and maintenance are all automated and all managed by Amazon Web Services. The database itself is resizable, which means that if you start with a 50 gigabyte database and then you realize you need a bigger one, you can resize the database up to one terabyte. And also you have detailed monitoring metrics, which allow you to control the machine and check the status. Oracle, in particular, it's available in two uh, versions, the Standard and the Enterprise Edition. You can bring your own license if you already own one, or you can rent the license as you go, which means that the hourly price for the machine will be slightly higher to reflect the cost of the license. So let's start. This is the AWS Management Console. You can uh, connect to this machine using your account, your Amazon Web Services account and password, and then you can sign in. After a few seconds, you will be connected to the AWS Management Console. From here, the first thing that we want to do to be able to launch an RDS instance with this button here we need to create a security group, a database security group. Click here, create database security group, give it a name such as Oracle RDS, and we can also give it a description. This security group will be used to connect remotely to an Oracle RDS instance. Yes, create. Once you created the first security group, there is no authorization yet, so we need to add one. We can add a range of IP addresses. In this case, for the purpose of this demonstration, we will just enable any IP from anywhere. But then, of course, we would also be able to uh, authorize only a specific Amazon EC2 security group. If you have other machines on EC2 that needs to connect to these databases. Okay, after a few seconds, we will see that the status is now authorized, which means that we can uh, just go on the RDS dashboard and launch our database instance. The wizard will guide, will guide us through this. So we can pick an Oracle machine. We'll focus on Oracle for this specific uh, tutorial. We picked Oracle Standard Edition. Bring your own license model. Uh, we have to specify the instance class, which is the size of the machine. A small one will be enough. Let's say that 10 gigabyte are enough for now. The identifier for this database would be oracle-rds. The master username would be just oracle user, and then we will pick a password for this. Continue. There are a few other things that we need to specify. The name of the database itself, MyDB, will be fine. And pay attention here, you have to specify port 1521 for an Oracle database. We can also specify an availability zone or a specific data center where we want this machine to run. And then we pick the right security group, Oracle-RDS, the one that we just configured a few seconds ago. The backup retention period can be customized, three days, for example, and we can also specify the time of the day when this occurs. 
Uh, of course, every time is in UTC time zone, so make sure you uh, make your calculations right. Once everything is all set and we are satisfied with this setup, we can just launch our database instance. Now we go to the view your database instances. As you can see here, the database is now creating. Now, uh, after a few minutes, we will be able to see that the database will be up and running. It's available, as you can see here, green light. Now, from here, there are a few operations that we need to perform. First of all, let's take the endpoint, which is the URL of this machine, this newly created machine, and then we will use it uh, uh, later. To connect to this database, we want to use Oracle SQL Developer, which is a software provided by Oracle itself. We enter the parameters that we all specified before, the SID, in this case, is the name of the database, and hostname is the endpoint that we just copied a few seconds ago. Then we can save this configuration and connect to it. Okay, now we're connected, as you can see, and we can uh, act on many, many items. In specific, I want to do some simple SQL to show you that this database is working. Let's first create a table. We call it names and we put some parameters into it, uh, key, primary key, name, surname, and age. The table was just created. Now we populate this table with a few uh, values. In this case, I picked some Amazonians, Andy Jesse, Jeff Bezos, Werner Vogels, and myself. So we run this, and as you can see, four rows have been inserted. Now the last thing we want to do is to select everything from names and just uh, read from this table. And as we can see, these are the results. So the database works, perfectly works. Quite good. OK, uh, the other few things that we can do from here is to take a snapshot uh, or a backup of our database. It's a manual one. Uh, we can also look at the parameters for this database. We might need to refresh this page to be able to see it the first time we, we launch it. And from here, you can read all the parameters or even modify some of them if you need to. Pretty good, right? So you have almost full control on these machines. Let's see how to create a database snapshot. You click here. You select the database instance that you want to use. In our case, we have only one, oracle-rds. The snapshot name is test1. And then it will take a few minutes, depending, of course, on the size of the database, to create this snapshot. And then, of course, we can use this snapshot to revert back in time, or we can also use the automated backup snapshots to do this. Pretty cool. So we were able to launch a database in just a few minutes, and the database is running. It runs. It works. Uh, we were connecting uh, to that database with SQL Developer, which is software provided by Oracle. And uh, from here, since you're probably a very experienced uh, database administrator, you can uh, do multiple things. One of the common things that uh, you might want to do is to change the instance class or the size of this database machine. So we can go from a small to a M2 X large, for example. But when we do this, pay attention that the database will need to be rebooted. The machine will need to be rebooted, especially if we apply immediately. So make sure that you're not using it uh, in production when you want to do this. Okay, pretty good. So this quick demo has finished. Let me just add a few more details. There are some limitations as of May 2011. First of all, there are no multi-AZ available yet. Multi-AZ or availability zones means that you can run multiple copies of the same database across multiple data centers. If one of the uh, databases fails for hardware reasons or other reasons, the other one in another availability zone will take over automatically. But this feature is available for MySQL, but not available for Oracle databases yet. Also, there is no read replication feature available yet, uh, which means that you can run multiple machines to improve read performances. Uh, this is again available for MySQL, but not yet for Oracle. When you have a crash and you want to recover the machine, it requires a restart, which is different than the usual Oracle database when you run it on your own machine. The max database size is currently one terabyte, and the versions of Oracle are only 64 bits. 
So try it out. You just need an AWS account. It's pretty simple to sign up for AWS. There are no upfront costs, no commitments, no termination fees. For example, if you want to run two small instances just to play with it for four hours, you would spend 1.28 US dollars. Pretty nice, isn't it? There are some resources available. You can uh, read the documentation on Oracle RDS at this link here. There's also a migration guide available at this link here, which helps you migrate your data from your own Oracle on-premises to Amazon RDS. And there are also some more details on Amazon RDS, including pricing, at this link here. Also, if you want to download Oracle SQL Developer, I just created a very simple short link for you to do this. And attention to macOS X Leopard users, you have to run this script first, otherwise Oracle SQL Developer will not work. Thank you very much for your attention and your time. You can download this presentation at this link here. I'm Simone from Amazon Web Services. Goodbye.